Good afternoon, students. Welcome to our afternoon read aloud. Remember, I promised that this afternoon you would meet a new American hero in a new tall tale. Let's just review this. A person who may or may not have existed who was well-liked and did good work, okay? So the new character we're meeting today is John Henry, an American legend. Okay, and I can see on the front, there's a big man, John Henry, and it looks like he has a big hammer, a big hammer in his hand. Stories and Pictures by Ezra Jack Keats. Ooh, look at this title page. John Henry. Wow. There is a big giant sledgehammer banging in a big iron kind of, looks like a nail. And we'll find out exactly what it is as we continue with the story. An American legend. Wow, look at these amazing illustrations. A hush settled over the hills. The sky swirled soundlessly round the moon. The river stopped murmuring. The wind stopped whispering. And the frogs and the owls and the crickets fell silent, all watching and waiting and listening. Then the river roared. The wind whispered and whistled and sang. The frogs croaked. The owls hooted and all the crickets chirped. Welcome, welcome, echoed through the hills. Wow, I think something special happened. It was like all of nature stopped to wait and listen. Let's see. Oh! And John Henry was born, born with a hammer in his hand. Bang, 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 rang little John Henry's hammer through the cabin as he crawled about. What's that rascal up to now? His mother chuckled, and before she knew it, he was big enough to help her around the house. Okay, so let's turn back for a minute. So this is the little cabin that he was born in, and there's John Henry, born with a hammer in his hand. Okay, as he grew up, he did a man's work with his father. One day, John Henry thought, I'm taller and stronger than anyone around. It's time I went out into the world. He said goodbye to his mother and father and off he went. He worked on farms and in cotton fields, but all that was too tame. So he got himself a job on a riverboat. Tame means like it was just too kind of calm, right? He wanted some more adventure. Oh, he wanted to go exploring, right? On a riverboat. And there he is. Well, this is reminding me a little bit of, of how Johnny Appleseed left his home, right? With all his possessions on a stick in a bag. Oh, there I see a ship, a boat on the river. And there he is. Is that something's going to happen? That's interesting. Let's see. One stormy night, the ship plowed through the darkness. Suddenly, the big steel rod that turned the paddle wheel broke. The wheel stopped turning. Smash! Went the rod through the bottom of the ship. Pump water! Shouted the captain. Get to port before we sink! John Henry leaped to the paddle wheel crank. He seized it, pushed and grunted and pulled. Slowly, the giant wheel turned. With all his strength, he kept it turning. Lord Almighty, help us! Someone whispered in that long, dark night. As day broke... They sighted shore and pulled into port. A thunderous cheer went up for John Henry. Okay, we got to stop and think for a minute. So a few things. So the boats that ran on the river where he worked, which was probably maybe the Mississippi River or Ohio River, those were big, important rivers that had a lot of boat traffic. A lot of them were run by steam engines, and these paddles would turn and turn and turn to make the boat go. So it's saying that the, the, the wheel got stuck, the paddle wheel was stuck and wouldn't work. But John Henry was somehow able to push it himself with his super strength. Anyway, and then another thing to keep in mind is we're used to thinking of the river here, our Potomac River, which you can just see across, right? It's, it's a big river, but you can see across it. You could actually swim across it. But... 
these rivers that these ships were on were really very big. So the idea that the boat was in the middle of the river and needed to be rescued, needed to be paddled to shore to be safe was because it was such a big river. So John, John Henry jumped, leapt to the rescue. John Henry felt a new excitement in the air. Men were talking of railroads being built from the Atlantic to the Pacific. They're going to lay those tracks over rivers, across prairies and deserts, right through mountains and through Indian lands and stampeding buffalo herds and bad lands. Goodbye, boys, cried John Henry. I'm going to swing me a hammer on them beautiful new tracks. My hands are just itching to hold a hammer again, John Henry said. He tried one for size and laughed. It sure does feel fine. How he drove those spikes, singing to the clanging of his hammer. The men joined in, their voices singing, hammers ringing, and John Henry's gang was in the lead as day after day the tracks moved steadily westward. So we'll make a connection later about the idea of the trains moving westward and opening up the west. Rising across their path was a sprawling mountain range. Its snow-capped peaks reached high into the clouds. We'll have to tunnel through, said his friend Lil Bill. It'll be awfully dangerous. Could be cave-ins, someone put in. That suits me fine, said John Henry. Me too, add Lil Bill. Here's how we'll do it, boys, the foreman called out. A couple of men will drive a hole into the rock. Then the powder men will put dynamite into the hole and explode it. The others will cart the loose rock away. We'll do this again and again until we have a tunnel right through this mountain. And it's going to be a real big tunnel, boys. Big enough for a giant locomotive pulling one of them long strings of trains. All right, boys, blast away. So they're going to explode and dig out through the mountain. Deep into the mountain they worked as John Henry's singing echoed through the tunnel. The powder men got ready to blast more rock. They filled a hole with dynamite, put in a long fuse, and lit it. Run, men, cried the foreman. They all scrambled back, ready to dash clear of the blast. At that instant came a great cracking and rumbling, and the entire tunnel trembled around them. It's a cave-in! We're trapped! There was no place to run. The fuse burned closer to the dynamite. John Henry was nearest the fuse. He ran to put it out, but tripped and fell. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm hurt bad, he groaned. I can't get up. The fuse burned farther out of reach. Others rushed toward it, but they were too far away. Suddenly, John Henry remembered. He still had his hammer in his hand. Down came the hammer, smack, on the burning tip. Oh, so even though he had fallen on the ground and he couldn't reach it with his hand, he could swing his hammer and reach it with the hammer and put out the fire, the fuse that was going to make the dynamite explode. The fuse was out, danger passed. Sighs of relief filled the smoky tunnel. Whew, help me up, boys, mumbled John Henry. Clearing their way through the cave-in, the men carried him to safety. Some days later, they heard an unfamiliar clatter. Down the tunnel came a group of men with a strange machine. This is a steam drill. It can drill more holes faster than any six men combined, a new man bragged. Who can beat that? John Henry stepped forward. Try me. He and Lil Bill took their workplaces. So there's John Henry and Lil Bill. Lil Bill's like his sidekick, right? John Henry gripped his hammer. Lil Bill clutched his steel drill. Check the machine, came an order. A nervous hand fell on the switch. In the dark, both sides waited for the signal to start. A hoarse voice counted. One, two. So, so far, the men had been doing this work with their strength, right? They use dynamite to explode the rock and then they go and dig it out and dig it out and dig it out and they hit with their hammers. But now they bought, brought a steam engine, a steam drill that can go t -t 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 and use a machine to do the work of the men. But John Henry and Lil Bill say, no, we can do it. We can, com we can compete against that steam drill. So they counted down for the start. Here we go. One, two, 
three. The machine shrieked as it started. John Henry swung his hammer and a crash of steel on steel split the air. Clang, bang, clang. The drill got red hot in Lil Bill's hand. He quickly dropped it and picked up another. Hiss, whistle, rattle. Men frantically heaved coal into the hungry roaring engine and poured water into the steaming boiler. Oh, look, it's going so fast you can hardly see it, his hammer. Whoop, clang, whoop, bang. John Henry's hammer whistled as he swung it. Chug, chug, clatter, rattled the machine. Hour after hour raced by. The machine was ahead. Hand me that 20-pound hammer, Lil' Bill. Harder and faster crashed the hammer. Great chunks of rock fell as John Henry ripped hole after hole into the tunnel wall. The machine rattled and whistled and drilled even faster. Friends doused John Henry and Lil' Bill with cold water to keep them going. Then John Henry took a deep breath, picked up two, two sledgehammers and sang, Hey, no hammers, strike such fire. Strike light lightning, Lord, and I won't tire. Hammers like this, Lord, there's never been. I'll keep swinging them, Lord, till we win. Oh, so he's singing himself a song to encourage himself. John Henry swung both mighty hammers faster and faster. He moved so fast, the men could only see a blur and sparks from his striking hammers. His strokes rang out like great heartbeats. As the other, at the other side of the tunnel, the machine shrieked, groaned, rattled, and drilled. Then all at once, it shook and shuddered, wheezed, and stopped. Frantically, men worked to get the machine going again, but they couldn't. It had collapsed. John Henry's hammering still rang and echoed through the tunnel with a strong and steady beat. Ooh, the machine is broken. Suddenly, there was a great crash. Light streamed into the dark tunnel. John Henry had broken through. Wild cries of joy burst from the men. Still holding one of his hammers, John Henry stepped out into the glowing light of, dying, of a dying day. It was the last step he ever took. Even the great heart of John Henry could not bear the strain of his last task. And John Henry died with his hammer in his hand. If you listen to the locomotives roaring through the tunnels and across the land, you'll hear him singing, singing of that great steel-driving man, John Henry. Listen. So what happened? The work, the work of John Henry, the great work that he did to try to go against the machine, to try to compete and, and make it through the tunnel, was he was successful, but it was just too much for him, right? And, and he died after that. And part of the idea here is that, because I'm going to do something at the end of the book, is to consider that he was going against a machine. And, and this page really shows that. Little Bill and and John Henry with their hands, with their labor, trying hard to beat the machine, to go against the machine, right? And um, that's something that this story is about, the idea of a time in American history when the work of people was starting to get taken over by the work of machines. And we even have that today, right? And the idea that John Henry was trying to show that the work of, of the people was good and strong and needed, and that letting the steam drill beat him was not gonna happen, right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed John Henry. It's kind of dramatic, and we'll hopefully uh, enjoy some more information about John Henry on another day. So when you go to do your activity in Seesaw, maybe you can remember an exaggerated detail from John Henry, or from a Johnny Appleseed or Paul Bunyan story to uh, draw and write about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading, do some writing, help your family around the house, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.